Hello and welcome to the Ministry of Broken Ant Mills. Today, I'd like to talk about probing, or measuring parts. And this is something that I've recently been quite busy with, and this is something that has kept bothering me for quite some time. Probing parts on a CNC router, a CNC mill, or any other mill can be a bit tedious, especially on a CNC machine, and especially if you have some nick for automation as I do. And so, while well, probing and poking at parts manually is all fine, with a CNC router it's all, all that fun. In a professional environment, what you would do is, you would use a professional 3D probe. Products from Renishaw or Bloom are of course available on the market, but they will set you back a couple thousand of dollars or euros, and are probably outside the reach for even the most serious hobbyists especially those that don't operate a mill, but rather a router. So I had a look at the market and tried to find a product that is reasonable, is wireless, does 3D probing, and doesn't set me back thousands of euros. And also I didn't want to have something really, really cheap from the shores of China, where I would know that the measurement uncertainty is beyond anything that's considerable acceptable. So, also with the aspect of size constraints, I had a look at the market and I finally found something. A small product by a company from Belarus. Before I go on, a very short notice. I bought this product with my own money at full retail and I have had it for about a year now. Everything you will hear from me today is my honest opinion. And truth be told, I rather like the product. So you will hear some pros, some cons, but overall, I think it's a fantastic product for the price of about 150 euros, including shipping and import tax. So what is in the box? Well, in the box, there's a probe. There is a small PCB. And because with probing, additional tips are always useful. There is a small additional tip. The probe itself is fairly compact. I do have fairly large hands, but let's put some measurements to it. The shank is 6 millimeters or 0.2 inches, or any other kind of freedom units. The length is about 80 to 85 millimeters or 3.12 inches, and the diameter of the body is 32 millimeters or 1.27 inches. This is important because on most CNC routers, Z-height is really, really limited and a long probe doesn't fit between the spindle and the workpiece. The probe body is made fairly simple. It's a bit of turned aluminum and a, I guess, acrylic body which houses a bit of electronics. It has an on and off switch, currently off, a couple of screws underneath to adjust for run out, which will determine the run out of this tip and a screw-in replaceable tip. These come with a ruby ball or in plain full carbide. For reference purposes, and this is something where I don't know the freedom unit out of the top of my head, this ball is about two millimeters in diameter. This is part one of the system. Part two is the actual PCB. The PCB has a couple of switches to determine its switching behavior. It can work normally closed or normally open and work as an NPN or as a PNP style connector or interface. It has an on-off interface, a couple of dip switches for radio frequency setting, the antenna itself, a small beeper, so it will make a rather annoying noise if it has contact. And it has several connectors. You might ask or wonder why there are so many of those connectors. The reason is fairly straightforward. This probe not only gives a probe signal, takes VCC, so voltage input, and this will work, for instance, with 24 volts, which makes it really nice to work in a regular cabinet for a router, but it will also work at lower voltages. It takes a ground, but it will also take one more input, which is a tool setter. So you can connect your tool setter to this board and this board to your actual controller. Why is this important? Well, most controllers, and in my case, this is Linux CNC, only accept one probe input for all probing operations because they usually use G38.2 as a command which will only listen to one input. Also, there is a little error 
output, which is usually used to indicate that the probe has lost its wireless connection. The wireless connection is I sing 2.4 GHz and has a potential to be affected by Wi-Fi connections. You can therefore switch between different channels, but careful testing is advised by the manufacturer and my own experience, even though my workshop is in the basement, tells me that it is worth playing around to get the most stable connection possible. The setup itself then is fairly straightforward. Although not shown here, because this is an additional board that I have, the kit comes with a small plastic box, which will allow to house this, while at the same time have these three LEDs, which will give you status information visible. Otherwise, the connection is fairly simple. These are little screw-in terminals and should work just fine. In probing, or any kind of measuring, repeatability is a major concern. And this is something where you find very little information on this particular product and I've been repeatedly asked whether I liked it, I usually said yes, and I was asked specifically how repeatable is a probe and how it's working like. Now, I've already introduced you to the parts, what I'd like to do in the remainder of this video is to give you an overview on how to easily probe something, this will be very basic, and furthermore I'd like to do some simple experiments regarding the repeatability. Well, why is repeatability such a difficult thing to work out? Now, repeatability, or in this case it's more about the measurement uncertainty, has certain aspects that go into it. One is a probe itself. There is a certain randomness into how these contacts release and the probe goes on and off signals. Then there is a radio signal which will have some latency as well. So, while the machine is moving towards a part, there will be inaccuracies in timing and hence in position measurement. Third major factor is a machine itself. This particular CNC router, although fairly beefy, has motion error. It is not compensated, it doesn't have glass scales, instead it uses bolt screws of some Chinesium grade. And JMC IHSV servos and closed loop stepper motors for its motion. So it will have some residual error in, repeated, in repeatedly getting to the same position. This is something I'd like to very briefly analyze in this video. What you will see me doing is, besides giving you the introduction on how to operate it, you will see short explanations of each setup and afterwards we will have a look at a bit of data that I've collected off camera to discuss the impact of different probing speeds onto the probing accuracy. Hopefully this will shed some light on the performance of the system, which I think for the price is perfectly adequate. One more word on the setup. This is your typical aluminum based, aluminum profile based CNC router. At a working envelope of about 200 millimeters 640 across X and 1200 something along Y. It's reasonably large, but otherwise it's nothing super special. It is operated using the control software Linux CNC in version 2.9, which effectively is the current stable 2.8. You will see me use a probe software interface within Linux CNC, which coincidentally has been provided as an open source to Linux CNC by the same guy who actually makes this product and he goes by the name Versa in Linux CNC forums and on GitHub. A word of caution, the software was developed for Linux CNC 2.7 whereas nowadays 2.8 or 2.9 is state of the art and should be used. However, due to some internal changes of Linux CNC it is advisable to do some minor tweaks to the software because otherwise it will not work correctly. I have done that work and published it on GitHub as well. In the description underneath this video you will find a link which will direct you to the corrected Python files for this particular interface. To measure a part with a probe and to do some actual probing after all the talk, we need to do, well, first thing, put this probe in the spindle. Second, measure the probe. What this will do is, it will move the probe to the tool setter and measure the length of the probe. Within Linux CNC, it will then record the distance measured of the height of the tool setter 
and use this together with the block height, which we have to determine next, to do tool setting. So now we use a hand wheel to move this, um, the machine across. And apologies for this taking a little bit longer, but taking video and working on a machine tends to cause expensive fails. And as mentioned earlier, setting the probe isn't all that fun. Now we are roughly positioned above the workpiece and we can now press a button to measure the workpiece height. And similar to the tests that we will do later, it has a two-prong cycle. Now we have measured the block height, it is automatically stored and we can continue with tool change. Error in probe measurement results from two different aspects. One is the actual spindle itself and its motion along Z, and two is a probe and its wireless communication. To have an understanding of the error that results from the motion of the machine, the following setup is used. A 1 to 3 block is mounted to the table, a digital indicator is mounted in the spindle and will be used to do repeat measurement in positioning the spindle towards a defined Z0. To test the repeatability of the probe along the z-direction, that is the direction you would use to probe down onto the part, the following setup is used. A 1 to 3 block is a stand-in for, uh, for the workpiece mounted to the table. The probe is mounted in the spindle and a digital indicator is used as an external measurement. It is zeroed to where the probe has initial contact so that when we do the repeatability test we can see where the deviation comes from. Similar to the test along Z, we now have to look at another direction. In this case, we are going to look along X, which means we are going to move from left to right in this picture. It is a similar setup. Again, we have the digital indicator and a reference surface, in this case, not the 1 to 3 block, but rather a part of the cross section or cross plate of the CNC router. Now, to measure the repeatability of the probe along X, the setup is pretty much the same as along Z. We have the probe measuring against the 1 to 3 block, the digital indicator measuring against the spindle, and we're going to do repeated measurements from left to right. Now that you've seen the experimental setup, let's talk about actual data. Now, admittedly, this is a drier part of this video, but this is also the reason why I started to make this video in the first place. I wanted to see how repeatable the probe really is. So what I have done is, off camera, I've done repeated measurements. I've used logging and a bit of automation to produce data sets with two different approach speeds for the fast initial approach at 200 and 300 millimeters per minute and for the slow approach at 10, 15, 20 and 25 millimeters per minute. Each set was repeated 25 times and then evaluated using well, the graph that you see right now. In the graph you see a blue line for the fast approach and a red line for the slow approach. Now for X the reason that the blue line is on top of the red line is fairly simple. X0 is located inside of the workpiece and the probe is traveling towards X positive. So it starts in the workpiece coordinate system at a negative coordinate. The larger the value is, and that is in this case less negative, 
the further the probe traveled before it signaled contact. And this sort of makes sense because the faster it goes, the further it will travel till the actual probe signal has been processed. If you look at the graph and specifically on the scaling on the y-axis, you will see that although it looks rather dramatic, the actual difference is more along the lines of one to two hundredths of a millimeter. So there isn't all that much of a difference between a fast and a slow approach. If we look at a similar data set, but this time for 300 millimeters and fast approach, we will see that as expected, the blue line is even closer to zero. So the probe traveled even further. If we look at the mean values of the slow approach, we will see that it's pretty much the same. Also, if we look at the standard deviation STD for all these graphs, we will see that it's usually in the range of thousands of a millimeter. In other words, it is well beyond what the actual axis is capable of doing. If we look at all X measurements, so those are uh, about 200 data points, we will see that there are some outliers, which usually break out around a hundredth to maybe two hundredths of a millimeter. And we will also see that the faster we do the slow approach, the well, bigger the change in the actual value. So the slower you go, the more accurate in theory you measure. Overall, the repeatability, however, as seen in the standard deviation, is really, really good. If we look at the Z data, we pretty much find the same picture. Red and blue are now switched simply because in this setup, Z0 was set on the actual workpiece top. So the faster approach over traveled into negative Z, whereas a posit um, the slower approach remained slightly positive, which is most likely due to an error in setting actual zero. If we look at the experiments before, we also see that there tends to be a tiny deviation that results from the actual motion control. There is one thing to note in this graph, and this is something I cannot necessarily explain. It looks like there is a minor trend in the data, meaning the red line sort of drops the more repeats or attempts have been done. I'm not quite sure why this is the case, and I cannot really confirm it in long-term measurement. If we look at the data for 300 millimeters, the same in principle applies. Although in Z, especially if we look at all measurements, there tend to be more severe outliers. Severe, again, is really relative because if you look closely at the data, you will realize that we're talking about five thousandths of a millimeter. So the scaling here is really, really important. In conclusion, what does this all mean? Well. It makes perfect sense to do probing at two different speeds. Do a fast approach at any speed that you're comfortable with, so long as within the reaction time the probe doesn't break, and then back off at least as far as the over travel would result, and then you do a slow approach. The slower Z, well, more precise, I guess, the results are. However, the difference isn't all that big. Even in this picture, it's two one hundredths of a millimeter. Given that we are talking about a CNC router, this isn't much. I will continue with the settings I had before, which I think were the default settings in probe screen. So I will do a fast approach at 300 millimeters and the slow approach at 10 millimeters. If you go below 10, this of course works. But it's so painfully slow that even a retract of one millimeter just takes forever to do. I just cannot recommend it. Okay, enough with the data. So what's the final verdict on this product? Let's go through some pros, some cons, and let's start with the pros. It is, as we've seen from the data, remarkably accurate and repeatable given the price point and the overall simple design of the product. And also, bear in mind, it's a radio frequency device. So this is an aspect to consider as well. It is very small, which is very useful for all those that operate CNC routers instead of large CNC mills. Fitting a HIMA 3D probe or 3D finder onto a CNC router is almost impossible because it will eat up all of your Z. And fitting something on even smaller machines, such as a Shapoko or an X-Calf, is pretty much impossible. 
I'm not sure if the burst probe will fit on the Slater 2 machines, but on your regular size CNC router it will work just fine. It is easy to integrate into your system. It's basically a three wire affair. You need 24 volt supply, ground and the probe signal. And it's no soldering required. Anyone can do it. If you have problems with the system, and this leads me to the con sort of, then I can highly recommend to simply contact Sergey of Burst.by. I have had problems with the electronics. A PCB died on me randomly and also caused me to crash a probe tip. So there is a con because I can't really say anything about longevity or long-term reliability. I don't know. I have had a failure. I've heard of others that had failures, but when I contacted him, his only question really was, uh, what is, do you still have the same address? I'll send you a new one, which I got fairly quickly. So uh, props to Sergey for being super helpful. However, product reliability, not 100% sure. Battery exchange on the product is a bit of a pain. I haven't shown it. And the reason is because that I'm lazy and I won't really want to recalibrate the probe. Newer versions come with a plug, so no more battery change. I guess that con isn't really a con anymore. Wireless, it is very convenient, but generally speaking in some setups and given your environment around your CNC router can be a bit frustrating. Overall, given the price point and what is possible with the device, hell, of course, I'd be happy to continue using it and I'd recommend it for any hobbyist to use. I wouldn't necessarily use it in a professional environment. So now that's it for this video. If you liked what you've seen, Please consider subscribing, leave a comment below and well, thanks for watching.